Hey everyone, I'm Daniel. Welcome to my channel. As you can see from the title, it is Hajj Aswad in Bible, the book of Re Revelation to be exact. You may wonder what I'm talking about. How is Hajar Aswad mentioned in the book of Revelation? Let me show you the hadith first. This is hadith from Sunan Al-Tirmidhi, hadith number 877. Ibn Abbas reported, The messenger of Allah said, The black stone descended from paradise and it was whiter than milk, but it became black due to the sins of the children of Adam. And the pagans, the black stone was already there in Kaaba and worshipped by the pagans before the time of Muhammad, before Islam. Muslims claim the Kaaba was built by Adam who brought the black stone from paradise as a souvenir. Can you believe this? M many things are are wrong in that one claim alone why did adam need a souvenir was allah aware of this the fact adam took the, the stone from paradise black stone from paradise if allah is not was not aware of it 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 means adam stole it as simple as that and not only that he he basically lost it. So he took the stone from paradise and he lost it. Because Ismail, thousands of years later, Ismail found it. The, uh, so Adam and Eve lost the black stone and the Kaaba. And how did Abraham found it and start renovating? No clue. Anyway, and then Ismail found the stone, the black stone for some reason. I don't know how they know, how they knew this was the black stone Adam took. No idea. But let us go along with the story. And do you know what happened next? Abraham and Ishmael lost the Kaaba and the stone to the hands of the pagans again. How? No story on how, when, who, what, as usual. The black stone was important to the Arabian polytheist prior to Muhammad's prophethood. Ibn Ishaq said the tribes of Quraysh collected stones to rebuild the house, its tribes, its tribe collecting on their own. They started rebuilding it until the rebuilding of the Kaaba reached the po to the point where the black stone was to be placed in its designated site. site. A dispute erupted between the tribes. Each wanted to place the black stone. And then, and then suddenly, Muhammad came and, okay, Muhammad gave an idea. Why don't you put the black stone on a uh, piece of uh, like material, a garment, and place it on the ground. And each tribe hold the corner and bring it together. And... They saw, they saw it as a good idea and they called him Al-Amin for that the, uh, the honest one or something like that, the honest one oh this Al-Amin the honest one I don't know how he was called the honest one because of the idea of that idea according to Hadith not everyone worshipped the black stone during Islamic era Narrated Abis bin Rabia. Umar came near the black stone and kissed it and said, No doubt, I know that you are a stone and can neither benefit anyone nor harm anyone. 
had I had I not seen Allah's apostle kissing you, I would not have kissed you. Sahih Al Bukhari, Volume Two, Book Twenty Six, Hadis Number Six Hundred and Sixty Seven. And also, we can find Suwaid bin Gafala reported as Umar kissing the stone and clinging clinging to it and saying, "I saw Allah's messenger having great love for you." This hadith has been narrated on the authority of Sufian with the same chain of transmitter transmitters that he Umar said. I saw Abu Al Qasim, which is Muhammad, having great love for you. This is from Sahih Muslim, Volume Seven, Hadith Number Twenty Nine Hundred Sixteen, Two Nine One Six. The black stone that was not worshipped during pre-Islamic era, the era Muslims call Jahiliyah or the time of ignorance, suddenly become became the vo- the focus in the Islamic world. How could it be? Muhammad was already in awe of the black stone, even before Jibril visited him, as we can read in Hadith. Even Umar said it himself, that he has great love for that black stone. Let us read At-Tirmidhi, Jami At-Tirmidhi, Hadith number 961. Ibn Abbas narrated that the Messenger of Allah said, About the black stone, by Allah, Allah will raise it on the day of resurrection with two eyes, by which is sees and a tongue that it speaks with, testifying to whoever touch it in truth. So, Muhammad said in hadith that Allah will ra- raise a uh, black stone. The black stone will have two eyes and a tongue to speak and to see and will testify. The black stone, this kind of black stone, is in the book of Revelation. Let us read Revelation 13 verse 15. The second beast was given power to give breath to the image of Of the first beast, so that the image could speak and cause all who refuse to worship the image to be killed. Can you see how it's how they are related? Is it a coincidence? Another thing we can see how again and again, apart from this. Muslims are against Allah and His Quran. When they go for Hajj, they are supposed to kiss to try to kiss it, kiss the black stone. If they can't, they are supposed to point at it with their finger. It is this kind of act against Quran. It is against Surah twenty-one, verse sixty-six. Abraham said, "Do you then worship besides?" Allah, things that can neither be of any good to you nor do you harm. So Abraham asked, "Are you gonna worship something that will cannot harm you or benefit you?" But this is what exactly the Muslim, what Muslims do. They worship the black stone. They kiss it. They point at it every day. Especially when the Sunni is praying, if you see their finger, their finger will point at the black stone. Umar also mentioned. Umar also mentioned this: how the bat, the stone cannot can neither benefit him or harm him. He just did it because Muhammad did. Because Muhammad did it, he did it. There's something to think about. The relationship between the black stone and the beast from the book of Revelation. Thank you for listening. Whether you are worshiping the black stone or following Jesus, God bless you all.